Hey, hey, welcome to Half the Battle. You know, I've done this show for over seven years now, and we've talked about toys, comics, cartoons, and loads of other stuff. But there's one aspect of G.I. Joe that I've been uh, neglecting a little all this time. Namely, the artwork that was on the cards and boxes. And that's really an oversight on my part, because it deserves to be talked about. So I'm starting a new little series called Toy Art Talk, where we take a look at this work. The best way to handle this for me is to go all the way back to the beginning of my show and take a look at the artwork of toys I've already reviewed. That's right, I'm gonna take you back to the past to show you cool toys that kick ass! And we're starting off with a box art of the toy featured in my first ever review, the AVAC and the Terrordrome. Please don't go back and watch that, those first reviews sucked! So meet the Terrordrome box. You can't say I'm not starting this series off with a bang. It is one of the largest pieces of G.I. Joe box art ever, dwarfed only by the USS Flag and the Defiant Ones. I mean, look at the size of this thing! And man, there's a lot going on in this picture. But we'd better start with the overall look. The base is in full action, apparently being under attack, though we don't see the attackers because the focus of the work should obviously be the Terrordrome itself. The threat seems to be coming from both land and air, with anti-aircraft guns firing while the firebat is launched, while at the same time action is going on below. Um, not all the action here is good though. Yeah, there are a few weird things going on there, so let's get into the details. For one thing, the guys on top look like they're firing on their own people below. Now, this is Cobra we're talking about, so that's not outside the realm of possibility, but they really should have changed the direction of fire a little here. For another thing, Buzzer appears to be staring at a blank wall while operating a gun. Yes, I know, he's supposed to be looking through a viewport, but they didn't color that in properly, so it looks weird. And he's supposed to be the smartest Dreadnought. No wonder Serpentor looks like he's about to knife him in the back. For the last weird bit, I have no freaking idea what Mindbender is supposed to be doing here. There's action going on all around him, and he seems to be intently studying the ground. Like he's seen a very rare flower and is thinking, whoa, nobody better step on that. In all seriousness, this is probably because it's copying the way Mindbender looked on his own card art a bit. Other than all that, it's a great action scene. Monkey Wrench is about to drive the ferret, Torch is ready for action, and a battle android trooper is heading out into the fray. Just awesomeness all around. Oh, and the work also gives us a probable reason why they're under attack. They've got a prisoner. And it's freaking Dial Tone. Oh man, that is so funny and appropriate. In case you didn't know, Dial Tone was very much portrayed as a weenie in the cartoon. What with him getting fake kicked out of the Joes, and Cobra choosing him to be promoted to Colonel in one of their plots, because he would be so incompetent at it. And this dunking on the guy apparently continued in the box art, where he gets to be the only Joe taken prisoner. I love it! He even seems to be resigned to his fate here. By the way, I did say in my introduction that we talk about the AVAC art. And, um, well, there it is. It's funny that a lot of characters are seen fully, but not him. I guess because his picture was already in the right corner. Overall, a great piece of art. Yes, art. Now, I do know my audience, so I'm preaching to the choir here, but I do consider this art. Of course, art is in the eye of the beholder, and it's hard to define, but like pornography, I know it when I see it. And if a painting, something you hang on your wall, is art, then, well... I've had this box in my living room for the last week to look at it and get ideas for the video. You could say I've literally been studying an art piece. Sometimes I really love this hobby, especially when I get to do stuff like this. Now, we can't talk about art without talking about the artist. And to the best of my knowledge, this painting was created by Hector Garrido, who did a lot of the card and box art for G.I. Joe in the 80s. While I can't 100% confirm he did the Terrordrome one, he did create the Mindbender card, which this one copies. So chances are good he did both. 
So, if you've got card that figures on your wall, or held just the cards, and enjoy looking at them, you've got this guy to thank. And I'm happy to show him some appreciation here. Well, that about wraps it up. But since I've got the box here now anyway, why don't we take a look at some of the other sides? I mean, when else am I gonna have the opportunity to talk about it? The top has another drawing, of kids playing with the toy in black, white and red. I suppose I also have to call this art then. Hey, bad art is still art. I mean, the kids are drawn without legs, so they look like they have floating torsos. That, or the kid on the left, looks like the pterodrome is resting on his lower body due to the way he's tilted. You can still make out who the characters are, though for some reason there are three crimson twins there. Look, one, two, three. Huh, maybe they're triplets. Or they have a third sibling that nobody knew about, like the Olsen twins who had a sister that became Scarlet Witch. Lastly, there's the back of the box. It has a great photo of a fully manned base. Though there are some quirks in there. The top has parts in silver, while on the toy itself they are white. So this is a prototype. So is the AVAC who's missing the Cobra logo on his chest. Also, the Zarana figure is the much more rare version with earrings. And this makes sense as the earrings version was the first one that was created. The much more common version came later. Lastly, and this is just me being super nitpicky here, but there's a Cobra Trooper, or officer maybe, you can't tell from this photo, who has a Televipers backpack. And Scrap Iron also has a different one, while neither figure came with a backpack themselves. And that concludes our look at the Terradrome artwork and box. It's a great piece, that obviously had a lot of work poured into it. And I'd have no problem having a high quality print of it on my wall. Let me know what you think about this new video series in the comments below. I do make videos because I enjoy doing them, so there will be more of these. But how frequently I do them depends on how well this one is received. Well, I'll see you next time everybody. And hey, why not like, share and subscribe if that's your thing.